when you when you look at this versus that, you would say, ah, there's 30, 40, 50 bushels there. Well, unfortunately, there's not that. What are you much. hoping to see then? I, I consistently see about nine to twelve bushel yield increase comparing broadcast on the surface versus subsurface injected or or exact strip. Hi, my name is Jake Vossenkemper, Director of Research and Agronomy here at Liquor Grow. Hi, I'm Katie Hess, Director of Sales and Marketing here at Liquor Grow. And Dr. Jake, we're out here in your research plot near Roseville, Illinois today. And I don't know if the folks can see the location in the background or not, but we're not too far from there. Um, when we got out here, you know, we noticed this one plot. It's about at my knees on this side. And well, those two rows are frankly about at your knees too, but you're quite a bit taller than me. So let's tell the folks what we're looking at here and what's going on in this little section of your plot. Yeah, absolutely, Katie. This is this is one of approximately 35 different studies we have in corn and soybeans. So this trial is actually, it's new. It's a new trial to this year. And it was really kind of a trial that was brought on by customer and retail salesman demand. So the simple question we're trying to answer here is if you ban your nutrients, how much could you reduce your nutrient rate relative to broadcast? So for example, these four rows here, which are much taller and much greener, the rate would be what I call 125%, and that's gonna be about 60 pounds of, 65 pounds of P and a little over 100 pounds of K. It was subsurface injected right here. Right here, we put on the same rate of nutrients, only it was broadcasted on the soil surface. That's the only difference. It's just all about placement, and that's why we have these massive differences in the crop here. Okay, so both liquid suspensions, this one was broadcasted on the surface, this one was sub-injected. Yep, subsurface sub injected. Now, yep. why are we subsurface injecting this versus just our traditional exact strips that we've been yeah, talking a lot that, about? Yeah, that's a great question. Really, it came down to logistics, Katie. So, you know, I come to these locations, and, you know, I apply my fertilizer, and I'm planting in two or three days. So I was pretty nervous about planting back into a 125% hot band of fertilizer. So I did go ahead and subsurface inject it just to, you know, have a little bit of distance between the seed and the fertilizer itself. Okay, so, so if a guy wanted to um, do his exact strips a little earlier, you're saying that's probably going to show roughly the same results. Yeah, I, I think you would see roughly the same thing, yes. And maybe that can be a future study where I can come out here a couple weeks before planting and put that fertilizer out to, to not worry about that. I always just wish you could do it all the time here, yeah, Jake, know, because yeah. but now we have to wait till next year. So <laughs> Well, I was going to have you waiting for something, Katie. Yeah. Um, so this, this corn is about at the same leaf stage, but this one is quite a bit shorter. You know, oftentimes when we're looking at corn differences this early in the spring, you know, we don't always see a huge yield difference in the fall, but what are you thinking for, I mean, this well, looks when you, different. when you look at this versus that, you would say, ah, there's 30, 40, 50 bushels there. Well, unfortunately there's not that What are you much. hoping to see then? I, I consistently see about nine to 12 bushel yield increase comparing broadcast on the surface versus subsurface injected or, or exact strip, either one. And that's just because you're getting the fertilizer closer to the root system. You're not making that corn plant work as hard to find the nutrients that it needs. Yep. For example, Katie, uh, we took some soil uh, tests here in this study and in the 100% treatment, uh, we started at 7 ppm of P and in that band we were at 24 ppm of P. So we went from very much below the critical level to 20s, 20s kind of the critical level to 4 part per million over the critical level in the root zone where the crop's actually getting its nutrients from. So the crop really doesn't know the environment, it just knows its environment. It knows it's the growing. environments where the roots are and there's lots of P in that environment. But outside that environment, there's only seven part per million. So are you looking at a lower reduced rate of fertilizer near the band in this study as well? We are, we're looking at rates from zero, which is our check plot of course, all the way up to 125% of maintenance and 25% increments. So 0, 25, 50, 75, 100, 125. And the reason we set it up like this is I commonly get the question, well, if I'm doing exact strip or I'm 15 inch dribble banding, how much can I reduce my fertilizer rate and still maximize yield? And I get that question all the time. I bet 50 times a year. So it's a common question that I get. And that's why I developed this trial because I want to have a solid answer for that. There's some old research that was done by the University of Minnesota, and I don't even know how old it is. Maybe it was done in the 70s or 80s, but it's old, okay? And that research says that, I mean, I was born in the right. 80s. I guess I'm getting kind of old. But that research says you could reduce your P and K rights by as much as 
but that's a lot, right? And things have changed a lot in the last 20, 30, 40 years, right? So there really isn't a lot of other great information out there on answering the question, just how much could you reduce the rates if you wanted to? I tell people at least 25%. That's probably pretty conservative, but it could be more. And this trial is really to help m give me some solid numbers so I can give better advice. So Jake, let's go ahead and show them that right now. Okay, Jake, so we've moved. It looks about the same, you know, but we did really move a whole row back. And now I'm standing in where you did not put any fertilizer on at all. Yep. And you are standing in between that and 75%, 75% banded. Banded, okay. Yep. And so you can see quite a bit of difference from where there's been no fertilizer put on to a banded application. application of 75%. Yep. And right. really when you look at this and we'll we'll put some comparisons up on the screen here, but you can really see quite a you know difference, difference. in height, yes. leaf size, yeah. Yes, yep. and it looks very comparable to that 125. So to go along with what you're saying of, you know, changing the environment so the corn plant thinks it's within a yeah, better thinks, environment thinks than it has plenty in. of nutrition and access to it, right? That's right. right. So as times get tough if you're in some short year lease yeah. stuff Right, Katie. I mean, obviously, we're in the business of selling fertilizer. We're not gonna not gonna shy away from that, sure. right? But we are called Liquid Grow. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, sometimes it's just not in the cards to build fertility like we'd like to, right? Mm -hmm. So, if you're in that situation, cash rent situation, whatever situation you're in, and you need to be efficient, that's when you need to think about banding and can I reduce rates and still maximize yield that's a really important question we don't have a lot of good information and i hope this study is going to really help us kind of refine those recommendations so if you're a farmer and you'd like to get out here to one of his research plots we are opening this up this summer first come first serve we have limited basis for that but get a hold of your agronomy field advisor and they'll get a time set up with jake and we'll get you out here to show you a few of these different plots hope you guys are having a great day thank you stay in the know with liquid grow